All right, so I'm going to be showing how to open up and disassemble the Sonovo ThinkPad X1 Carbon Gen 11. All right, so this, one of these clips didn't pop in right. Okay, so this laptop, um, it's completely dead. The motherboard's toast. Um, we're just going to open it up and we're going to pop the SSD out. I tried a few things already to see if I could get it working, but sadly I wasn't able to. So we're going to pop it open and then test the SSD. And if the SSD is good, then we're going to basically just put an enclosure. All right, so we're using a PH1 or JS1 screwdriver to undo the screws here. Okay, as you undo the screws, they do have little washers that hold it onto the bottom cover. So that way it helps pull it up and also so you don't lose the screws. All right, so just twist it until you feel it click or you can hear it click like that. Okay, then you know it's good. All right, you can hear that click, right? All right, also there's a little hole here for like a reset, battery reset. You can use a little pin. You can use, if you have a SIM eject tool that's long enough, a needle, you can use a small folded out paper clip, whatever works to push in that hole. You'll feel it click, press and hold for about 15 seconds and that will do a reset. Um, if you're having some issues, give that a try. That could save you. All right, anyways, now that we undid the screws, you can see a gap form there. We're just gonna get in and I'm gonna pull on that push with my thumb and pull with my fingernails here. Obviously you can use pry tools. Um, if you get this portion stuck, what you wanna do is kind of go towards the center here and then push down the top. Or what we're basically doing is flexing this inwards like that. So as you work your way, we're basically flexing it so the whole cover goes like that and it pulls the clips out. All right, so as you can see, now we can lift the whole cover and wiggle it and there we go. Okay. So there's the cover removed. We're gonna also remove the battery here. There's a separate also CMOS, BIOS, RTC, real-time clock battery, whatever you wanna call it there. Okay, so battery for that's under here, but the main battery we're gonna remove. Okay, we're again using the PH1 or JS1 screwdriver. And there's two along the top here, and then one on either side, and then two along the bottom. So basically two, two, and two. All right, so we'll just get all these screws out. Just like this. All right, and the way I keep the screws in order is I put them in the pattern, I remove them. Um, I just flip them upside down on their head so they kind of like sit like that, okay? And I just leave them sitting there. All right, anyways, now we're gonna disconnect the battery. So you wanna get underneath here. Once you get over here, you can just pull straight up and you can see it disconnects. The battery connector looks like that. It just slots down. Battery model number, there's multiple here, but the main one is L20C4P71, right? If you can't find it with that, you can use these ASM part number and FRU part numbers to see if you can find it. So there you go. Um, usually I'll find it on Amazon or something. Okay, we'll set the battery aside. Again, here you can see the CMOS BIOS RTC real-time clock battery. I already removed this and then tested uh, with it disconnected. I don't know if it's supposed to be that easy to slide out, but for some reason, like the first time I took it out, it was super easy to remove like that. But if you want to reset the BIOS, pull that out, open the laptop, and then press and hold the power button for at least 15 seconds to drain the power from the capacitors and things like that on the motherboard. I already tried that, nothing was able to get this thing turning back on, so most likely something on the board itself here is fried. This is the LCD LVDS connect, actually, hmm, there's two PR2 cable LCD, and this one is something else. I don't know. These both go into the screen. This one says LCD cable, so I don't know. Anyways, this has a little metal latch here. If you're going to mess with this, make sure you do the battery drain thing first. Okay, uh, I'm not quite sure how this one pops off. Does it go this way? Hmm. I don't know. These, these connectors can be tricky. I don't know if I want to mess with it because I don't want to risk breaking something. But usually these kinds of connectors go straight up, but I don't know. This one doesn't seem to want to go. I think there's a metal latch, but... I'm not sure how you unlatch it. Do I slide it this way and pull? Hmm. I don't know. I'm not sure how you get these connectors off. If I had to do it, I would figure it out, but... Hmm. 
I don't know. I'm looking at it. I can't really tell how this connector latches onto there. I mean, it looks like it's going to just pull straight out. But also looks like something is latching it like here. Oh, okay. So it looks like it, I pulled from there and that got it out. Oh, it does swing. What the heck? Okay. So this connector, let me see if I can show how it works. I didn't have to undo that latch to get it out, but this thing swings. Okay, so this goes on like that, and then this swings over and clicks down. Okay, but I don't know how you would pull on this from here. Okay, I guess from these two upper corners, you can flip that, and there you go. And then you could technically use this to kind of grab and pull it up like that. Okay, but the first way, I don't know if you can see, but the latch is here on the sides, here and here. Okay, so the way I took it out originally is I basically just pulled that latch away from the connector. So with my fingernail, I just went under that side and pulled that part of the tab outwards. You can see how it kind of releases it. And then that just let me pull the whole connector up. So, yeah, I guess you technically don't need to flip the whole latch over, but that worked. Okay. We'll latch that back over. CPU is under here, soldered to the motherboard. All right, heat sink obviously to there. Two fans, both connected to this one connector here. These, I just grab the wings with my fingernails and then just wiggle, wiggle, and it pulls out like that. Okay, but I'm gonna push that back in and leave it. There's no removable RAM here. It's soldered to the motherboard, logic board, whatever you wanna call it. And then you got the M.2 PCIe NVMe SSD here. You got this little connector here that just pops up like that. Okay, and that connector, um, I believe is just for the touchpad, yeah. Looks like it goes straight to the touchpad. Um, you got what are these little connectors. Okay. Um, I think this goes to the little touch scrolly thing in the middle of the keyboard, and then there's a cable that goes here. I don't know where it's going to. I think it's all going into this one piece for the keyboard as well as that. So the keyboard very likely all connects there, and there's a little flip latch mechanism here that you flip that plastic piece up then you can pull the cable out but I'm going to leave that in there okay um, you got a cable here going to this speaker here and then it goes around and I'm pretty sure it goes to the other speaker there and then you got another one over here you got this cable here going to this speaker which has another wire going down to this speaker okay um, not sure there's really much else I don't know what this two pin connector down here is for but there's one wireless uh, card is soldered to the motherboard logic board um, if you want to remove the antennas go from the tails pull straight up and I believe this is for the power button here so this again has a flip latch that you flip up you can pull that cable out but I think there's adhesive and stuff holding it as well right yep okay and I think that's just about it for me to show in here let me pull the ssd out i'm going to test it and then if it works i'm going to put in an enclosure for my customer and they'll have that as a way to get their data so we'll pull that it looks like somebody actually worked on this before if you're wondering how i know that is somebody wrote with pen all over these pieces anyways we're going to carefully lift the ssd up here just slightly don't pull it up too high and then wiggle and pull that out and there's the ssd it's a Samsung SSD, but it's like a generic one, right? I'm pretty sure it's a NVMe, PCIe NVMe. And yeah, they have a thermal pad under there and nothing else to show here. So I don't know what the other person did with this um, earlier. There's also a thermal pad on the bottom of this piece. So I don't know what the other person who opened this did. So everything else looks connected properly. So yeah. Let's go ahead and get these screws all in. Okay, I'm gonna leave this in here, but most likely the SSD is okay. It doesn't look like there's any liquid damage. Um, I'm gonna test it with an M.2 uh, reader, USB adapter thing. So let me grab that. So I have one of these, which let me plugs in uh, M.2 SATA or PCIe NVMe SSD. Okay, so we'll just get this in just like this at an angle. Pop that in, then this goes like that, like that in, line that all up, screw that down, 
There we go. Okay, now I'm going to test this with my laptop to make sure that the SSD is readable. And then if it is, I'll put it in an enclosure. So I'll be back. All right, so I tested it, it works, but it's encrypted. So I'm gonna have to help the customer most likely unencrypt the drive. Um, usually if you know your Microsoft account, um, it's pretty easy to unencrypt. Um, you just gotta log in to your Microsoft account. They actually give you a link if you log in and um, if you ever see that blue screen where it shows BitLocker encrypted, it gives you like the uh, website and stuff to unencrypt it. But anyways, or not to unencrypt it, but to get the key um, so that you can access it. So anyways, I'm going to go ahead now and put the SSD in this little enclosure. So depending what you buy, the enclosure will be different. That's what this one looks like. Okay, this one has a little clip here that holds it in place. Just line this up. Click that in. Oh, somebody's knocking on my door. Give me a second. I'll be back. There's the SSD. It's in. Has two cables. We're going to put this thermal pad on top and then slide this in. All right, I'll be back. All right, sorry about that. Anyways, let's go ahead and get this thermal pad on top. I don't know if this little sticker that they put there is going to affect anything. but Okay, so I guess let's peel this off. Okay, thermal pads like that. And we're just going to drop this on top. Just like that. Okay. And we're going to peel this thing off. Just like that. All right, I can actually see the shape of the sticker through the thermal pad. Interesting. All right, so this will just slide back on there. All right, yep. All right, and thermal pad's probably gonna get all chunked up, but it is what it is. All right, so we're gonna get that, and we're gonna push this through. Oh no, <laughs> it's gonna it's gonna chunk it up a lot. I think the sticker is making it too thick. I don't know if it's going to fit with the thermal pad. Oh, okay. Let's try again. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to work with the thermal pad because the sticker, I think, is making it too thick and it's just tearing it up. Not that the thermal pad is necessary because... SSDs on a lot of computers don't even have a thermal pad, but let's see if I can peel off this sticker and if that will help because the tolerance here is very small. But not like this is going to be part of your repair. Okay, that sticker came off relatively easily, um, but now, uh oh, I don't remember which way it was. Well, it is what it is now. Okay, stick it on. All right. Oops, I think I switched it around. Yep. Okay, well, now we're going to have two cuts into the thermal pad. It's working, but it's like smushing it and eating it. <laughs> okay. There we go. So now we've got that locked into place. Get the excess thermal pad off. All right, and that's pretty much it. Now we have a external SSD there. Okay, anyways, let's go ahead and put this laptop back together. I'll have to help the customer decrypt their drive later. Um, and the way I have to do that is using some command prompt uh, stuff. So if you want to learn how to do that, uh, I think I have a video for that. Feel free to ask me if you're not sure how. You do need to have access to the pin or the, sorry, the 24, I think it's 24 digit key. So you do need to be able to access that to be able to remove the encryption from the drive. So yeah, keep that in mind. All right, but anyways, we're going to go ahead and get these screws back in and that's pretty much all there is to it. Hopefully this video helped you guys out. If it did, please make sure to like, comment, subscribe 
share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. And if it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Uh, if you can't help out that way, it would help a lot if you could watch a few of my other videos and then like and comment on those as well, because that's what the algorithm likes to see. I also have another channel called It's Been Reviewed and More. Um, currently, I post my review videos on both channels, but hopefully once I get that channel going, I'm going to put them all on that one. Anyways, to get this bottom cover on, you need to hold it at an angle, slide the bottom first because it has these little tabs that stick out. Get those lined up. Once you see there's no like big gap there, you can lower it down and then you can go around the outside and then just push all these clips down. And then once you do that, just get the screws. I like to twist it backwards to hear it click and then turn it. All right. That way the screws don't cross thread or anything like that and don't damage the thing. All right. So we'll get these last few screws in and that's pretty much it. Again, hopefully it helped. Thanks for watching and I'll see you all in the next one. All right. The last few screws in and then you just want to look around to make sure all the gaps are closed all right looks good looks good and yep that's it all right again thanks for watching and i'll see you on the next one all right let's drop this bye